Final presentation of the day in this room before the dinner and a fantastic party um, is from somebody who really needs no introduction because I'm sure most of the folks in this room have seen his video on YouTube. Mr. Nick Sonder is an architect uh, based in California, does beautiful work, and he's also the guy who made um, just about every SketchUp user out there go, wow, you can do that with layout? I had no idea. So anyway, without further ado, Mr. Nick Sonder. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Hi. Yeah. Well, it's definitely humbling at this place. Um, when I came here a couple of years ago, I was really impressed with the work I saw, and I tried to up my game as much as I could between now, or then and now. And then I went to Daniel's uh, presentation, and apparently I'm not doing SketchUp right, because <laughs> I need to up my game again, because I'm not using enough plugins. Uh, I use a couple here and there, but a lot of my stuff is drawn kind of old school, where I do physically model everything from the very beginning, including terrain, which I know is an atrocious way to do it, but it's the way I learned. Uh, I was self-taught. I learned SketchUp very early on. I think I got our first disk copy from Atlas Software. It was my business partner at the time, who unfortunately passed away. Uh, was the one that introduced me to SketchUp because I sent him to um, Autodesk University in Las Vegas and they had obviously a tent up or something and he came back with that little disc and pretty much changed everything from then on as to how we approached architecture and how we approached documenting that architecture and presenting it to clients. Uh, it became really something we started to develop and combine with AutoCAD and the more I tried to do that the more I really disliked AutoCAD and how it worked. I used AutoCAD for years, I became very proficient at it, I learned it on version 2.3, uh, used it all the way up till version 2004 and at that point I pretty much just dropped it and decided I was really going to give layout a try and that was with version 3. Uh, it took a little bit of a leap of faith on my part just because I had no experience on it. I didn't even realize at the time there was such a big community of SketchUp users. It uh, just shows I, I live in a little town and nobody that, in that town, the other architects, used SketchUp. So I didn't really have a resource, didn't know there was this vast resource available actually until I joined Sketchication and uh, posted a couple images of some of the construction documents I was working on at the time. And that was the premise for that whole video. That's when Google contacted me and asked if they could come out and interview me and see what I'm doing with these drawings. Uh, that house actually from that video is finished now. It actually got built. I have some pictures. I'll, I'll show that a little bit later. And I'll talk about what I do with my process and how I structure the documents. Because coming, dropping AutoCAD completely, I had to develop a way where I could still provide the technical drawings that I used to provide with AutoCAD, um, but bring them into a different type of presentation where it's presenting full color and, and presenting as much in 3D as you possibly can. Because I've found that static 2D drawings actually really don't tell the story. And it's, it's kind of interesting how much my practice has changed and my relationship with contractors in town. Because we build these homes that are, they're very, you know, custom homes for, you know, fairly well-off individuals that build these homes as vacation homes. They're actually not permanent residences. They come up just a couple times a year. Um, this home, as an example, is one that's under construction right now. It's a 5,000 square foot home. And it has a very articulated roof. So developing it in 3D is something that really helps the contractor see what's going on. And so when it's, we have a project under construction, a lot of times we aren't referring to the 2D drawings. In fact, part of the construction documents, I include multiple perspective sheets with renderings, uh, and we use all of the detail sheets and all the details. I think if you've seen the video, and I'll show some samples of them here, they're all 3D extrusions, so it's very simple and easy to understand. We have uh, a, a large Spanish-speaking community as the workforce for most of our subcontractors. And so for them to be able to just see an image as opposed to something that's a, a black and white diagram with a bunch of text on it makes it a little bit difficult for things to understand. The other thing that we've done, which has been really interesting, is once we get to the point of drywall on a home, so when we're ready for finishes, we aren't referring to the documents anymore. Now we're just 
putting up renderings of each room. So on a typical home, I usually develop it to a, a pretty high level of detail. Sorry if I turn my head, it sounds like I'm losing the, there we get the blue off. So if you go in, and actually this is an older model, I'll open up the other one. This is one where it was pretty much in design development, so the cabinets and interiors were just done as boxes. But if I open up the, this is actually the finished home model. I haven't updated it into that particular site file, but I'll zoom into here, and you'll see there's a lot more detail involved. And so on every house, I try to bring the SketchUp model to a level of detail that shows every single cabinet in the home, shows all the appliances, all the fixtures, all the interior trim, so that I can literally just take images for the contractor for different rooms. And so we'll go around on each room, instead of having interior elevations, we'll just have an image like this for the kitchen. Boy, that resolution looks awful on that screen like that. Um, and typically, I'll take it actually into a rendering program, not a SketchUp um, image, and then I'll ha we'll have that rendering up on each one of the walls which makes it a lot of fun for everybody that's on board. All the subs love it because they really see what they're striving for, for detailing, for even down to baseboard and trim details, um, tile work, borders, where we have, you know, here it's showing the, um, the actual hood is done with a hot rolled steel with separated panels with a, a painted black piece that goes between. It's a little bit more of a contemporary detail, but a lot of fun. And so this house, oh, this is the recording program, sorry. I'll show, this is the house, I'll just run a little slideshow of it. it. Shows some of the mixes of renderings that I've done for that particular house that's under construction. And you'll see some of the images of the actual finished work going on right now. And this is the state it's in right now, I actually drove out last Friday just to take a few pictures of some of the projects under construction. But it, it's really matching the home almost to the T, down to color, detailing. Um, let's see, here's a rendered image of the finished product. And then I think I got a couple of shots of it around the back. And it, it's really come along well. The contractor's doing a great job with it, considering its complexity. We're only about eight months into construction. Most of our homes take anywhere between 14 months to 24 months to build on some of these more complex homes, mainly because we have a lot of restrictions when we can build, when we can move earth. We have a, a restriction between um, May 1st and October 15th where we cannot move any dirt. So we have to get all the site work done, prepped, we have to get the foundations in and then we can frame and we frame through our winters and we get a lot of snow. So it tends to slow things down when people are working in the cold. So. Those are examples, or an example of a house that has been developed, a very complex house, solely with the use of SketchUp. And I've gone through different ways of how I set up drawings and how I set up models. And uh, bear with me here. And so I've decided the way I like to do them is I, I try to keep my models really tight and so they don't get very large. Because obviously if you're modeling every single cabinet, every piece of trim, light fixtures, and so on, the model can get really big. So I tend to keep models in different form. I opened up, for instance, this is the site model, and I'm gonna zoom back out. And you'll see there's lots of different scenes that I've saved. I always keep one which I've labeled working model, which keeps it as a simple file that has no shadows on. I take off as much of the 3D trees and things like that to keep it so I can actually work with it. And it's, and it's still, it's fairly, it can move it around fairly fast. I have a pretty fast um, laptop here, but it makes it so I can still work in it. And it's a very large file. And so what I do to keep the file size down is I do all my modeling of the house separately as its own model, which is this one. And in this one, it has specific tabs that save things that are related just to the house, not the site. So I don't generate items like elevations off of the model that has the house on the site, mainly because where we live, we have a lot of topography change. So in some places, it'd be very difficult to capture an elevation correctly. 
So this way I've isolated just the building itself. And in this model, it generates specific drawings. And this is what I call my base file. This is the one that I edit. This is the one that I only do any modeling in um, that's related to the building itself. And in this, I save a lot of different tabs. Um, some of these were for details that show up later on that really just look at little things like a stair guardrail. And then I'll do a, a, some notation on it and it goes on to the detail sheet and it'll talk about you know, it's a six by six or eight by eight newel post with a inch and a half guardrail. But it also contains, as you saw, the elevations, because I see those as base drawings to the design. So it'll rotate around and give me, you can see my note there, fix my window there. This must be an older one. But it also generates, in addition to the elevations, all the floor plans that I do then send out to layout. Um, as well as the line work. I, th I think if you've watched the video, what I do is I, I try to do a section cut to create plan line work that I bring into layout and I overlay over the raster image to get a vector render over the raster image, which gives a very a clear cut line and creates a, a really pretty drawing. So, uh, is it? Sure. I take, I, uh, in that plan, this line work was created from a section cut in SketchUp, and it's saved in the exact same position as the floor plan. So this, of course, makes it very simple when you're going back and forth or um, looking at that scene in layout to get it lined up exactly. So what I do is in layout then, the layout file for this will look at, to create the floor plan, it'll have two SketchUp instances in it. One of them is looking at this scene, which is the first floor plan. The other one is looking at the first floor line work laid directly over it. And so that creates a plan. I think I have a... Um, this is the PDF that's generated from it. And so it generates, this one consists of six sheets. I don't do any sheets larger than 24 by 36, just pet peeve of mine in the field. So I have to break larger homes up into multiple sheets. It's on top of it. Yeah, one of them is just looking at the line work. And so since it's just the line work, you delete the, or shut off the background. And that is sitting in layout in the layers. It sits on top of the raster image. So I always put the SketchUp file raster image as the bottom layer. And then everything else I layer up on top of it in order to get that, you know, the look here. So you see the crisp line work, which is also really nice to dimension to. I know everybody has mentioned some of the issues with dimensioning in, um, to a complex model specifically. If you can imagine on this, the raster image, when you're looking down on the plan, I do all the exterior trim, which has thickness, the interior trim, which has thickness, and at quarter scale, you could accidentally easily pick one of those elements and end up with an odd dimension and not know it. So a lot of times when I dimension, I'll actually shut off the raster image, the SketchUp model, and I'll just dimension to the line work, which makes it really simple. It's in the SketchUp file, which is, yes. So here's the SketchUp file. Here's the first floor line work in that model. It's I draw those. So the, the line work's created from a section cut. And I've just recently been using uh, TIG's section cut face, so I do use, you know, one plug in there. Saved me a little bit of time. And so uh, after I've generated that line work, then I can go in there and it, that going in to edit it for things like door swings just takes a couple of minutes. It's not a big thing, actually. I, could, I used to keep it actually the door swings in the SketchUp model, but it doesn't look very nice because of the arc. So I'd rather have that be a, a vector element. So <clears throat> again, it keeps all of the floor plans, uh, this goes to the second floor line work. And of course, the roof plan is, is kept in those base files. And then I was gonna open up, I'll open up the actual 
layout file. Ah, look at that. It's got 2014 on there. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll zoom up. Right, I'll go to the next page. And so the way I structure these files, I, I keep my files very simple. Um, I do most of my work, probably 80% of it is spent actually in the SketchUp file. And the most important part is organizing that SketchUp model so it's easy to manipulate. So I, I keep the file or the layer is very simple. So I keep, for instance, the entire first floor plan is on a layer called first floor plan. Second floor is second floor, roof is roof, but I can then toggle those on and off really easy. It keeps things very simple. In layout, I do the same thing. I keep extremely simple um, layer structure. So you can see here I keep, I'll flip to one of the more detailed sheets. I keep all the grid lines kept on a single layer floor plan notes on a layer, and this is on the levels that I want to see them so that they um, can read well. Dimensions, plan line work, which is the vector information right there. Try to click on, oh, I probably have the layer locked, no doubt, yes. Um, room names, there's a couple extras in there that I just haven't deleted because this due to time, but you can see the SketchUp model I put on the very bottom layer so that everything sits up on top of that. And I use that method for all of my, um, any plans, especially that are involve a section. And some of my site plans actually do involve a section. This is just tabbing through each one of the different plans. Uh, if you look, for instance, even on, I'm gonna go back to site plans. Here's the layout. This is the same house. I'm trying to keep it within the context of that first house that you were looking at. This might take just a minute, or will it crash? Better not. Yes, uh, the main reason I, I don't like just the, the quality of the raster image in the hybrid. Um, so for me, uh, and I've gotten just used to it, you know, I'm not saying this is the way to do it, it's just the way I do it, and I've gotten used to it where it goes very quickly. Uh, most of the time, my construction documents don't take me all that long because I spend so much time setting it up in the SketchUp model. So, uh, as an example, this year was, last year was my biggest year, and it looks like this year is going to be my, again, bigger than last year. And I've run eight projects since January, and five of them I got submitted to the building department right before I left for base camp. So if I look a little tired, it's because I haven't had a day off in a long time. But uh, so the key to making layout work is getting all, everything set up in SketchUp so that it's very easy to look at the scenes. So if you, oh, make sure I have some of these unlocked. Yeah, so for instance, if I click on highlight the SketchUp model, it's looking just at that particular scene, which in this case, this is for a landscape plan and it's more a design-build landscape plan. But I don't want to see the roof there because I want to be able to see everything that's built up to the foundation. Um, in this development, they're very particular about returning everything back to its natural um, state. So we have to go through and revegetate. That's what this light green poche is. It's not lawn. We have to revegetate everything within what they call the construction activity zone. And so each one of these plans, even though it's a site plan, it's also looking at the floor plan line work from the base SketchUp file, which is here, which will always match the same floor plan work that shows, line work that shows up in the floor plans. And so it's just layered on top of that. So then if you look at some of the other plans, um, I try to construct my site plans similar to what a civil engineer would do. So I don't just have one architectural site plan. I have one that's a construction management and utility site plan. I have one that's a grading site plan. Um, another one that's called a best management practices um, site plan, which we have to deal with all the on-site runoff for a 20-year, one-hour storm event it has to be maintained on-site. So we have some calculations we have to do, some boring stuff, but it becomes one of the site plans. The grading site plan, I blow up to a larger scale because I like to pin all the, um, pointing at my screen, should be pointing at that one. 
I like to pin all the corners with the exact elevation, as exact as I can get. And that's one of the things I love about SketchUp because I just pick a datum and I go around the building and I get the exact corner of every point on the house, which a lot of times you don't see. A lot of architects don't try to pin every single corner because it, it's semi-cumbersome, but with SketchUp to me, it's, it's very simple. What do I use? Yeah, I think I'm that's um, I, well, it's something I created, like this right here, this entity. Right. Yeah, I just created that. And that, for instance, tells it, tell, uh, that point is a wall that's sitting up above grade. So the top of the wall is at 6, 62, 44, 33. The bottom of the wall is 62, 42, 72. Yeah, what happens is I, I do work all my site off of a topographic survey. So a land surveyor sends me his AutoCAD file. So it's only as accurate as the survey, which is the case no matter what. And so I then model the site off of the survey. So once I've created that, it's as accurate as the survey. And so then I actually pinpoint one of his contour lines. I'll pick something simple and even, like I probably use 6240. And then I just pin the dimension line on the vertical so I can always go around the whole house and just pin every single corner. It's a very simple process. It usually only takes me about half an hour to go through an entire house, even this complex, to get every one of those grades. And then they're always accurate. And it's worked out really well. The earthwork contractors love it because they actually have some guidance. Uh, the Yeah, SketchUp gives me a special version. It's called the <laughs> Sonder version. No, you should have all of these trays. It's different on the Mac. Oh, do you have a Mac? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is, if you're interested, this is what the BMP plan looks like, which is um, basically we create these infiltration trenches around the perimeter of the house where all the runoff is, and then we take them into what we call bio-infiltration um, trenches, or um, what do we call those? Bio-infiltration, I'm drawing a blank. Anyways, these elements here, basically it's a, a pit that has silt fabric and gravel in it to absorb all the moisture, and then we landscape actually over it so you don't see any of these elements. And I'll show you a sample of the detail sheet. So these are the details of those elements. And so I go through all my details are done in this manner where they're um, individual SketchUp files. And at this point over the years, I've you know, I probably have a library of about 400 of these different details. And these are just site particular details with the bottom ones being the temporary ones. And these other elements are those more permanent BMPs. Kind of static boring sheet, but yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's why I learned this too. It took me a little while to learn to do this one. But if you look, the scenes, the key to it is you save the scenes in the exact same location. They will because what the way I do it is I will, uh, let me jump to the floor plans. Um, I'll try and just, let me unlock it. I'll show you what I do. It's always easier. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a little trouble seeing. I, I actually went skiing this morning and <laughs> played hooky. So I'm going to make sure I'm picking the right one. Okay, so I'm going to delete the plan line work. So what I do, it's quite simple, is I just select the SketchUp model, make sure I've got the plan line work layer selected. I just go edit, copy, edit, yep, paste it, and then re-render re it.
it's a big file, so it takes a little bit, but it should do it any second. There we go. And then I just go to the SketchUp model because it's already selected, and I change it to the first floor line work. Oh, I've got it on automatic. My apologies. And it's probably got the background selected. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that's, that's why I say I really focus all of my time on the SketchUp model itself and layout while I, I use it all the way through, obviously, to give floor plans to clients early on. All of my work is really focused on getting the SketchUp model set up for success in layout. Because the more you can make that simple, because trying to move it around and find that point and set it exactly where it is, that's what I used to do. And it's, it just takes time. So on uh, other, what I do then is, I, so I've got two models now. I've got a site model and I've got a, the main SketchUp model. There's other drawings that I like to document that I don't necessarily want to generate out of one model because they create so many section cuts that you can't really see anything. Um, specifically building sections, actually. And, and what I like to do, because the sketch, uh, section tool is so powerful, that I like to do lots and lots of building sections on all my projects. So I'm going to open up this file. And so what this is, is I never edit this file. The only thing I do with this file is I set up the scenes and make the section cuts in it. So this model is just an export. And you can see it gets difficult to work in if you've got all these sections. In this case, I can't remember how many there are, but it goes up. If someone's really good with this, obviously it goes to section R. So. What is that, 18 maybe, or 16, 17? Somewhere around there. And so I set these up exactly the same way. So you'll see I've got one that's section R, the next one's section R line work. And in this one, because it's cutting through kind of an oblique angle, I will typically, in the drawing, cut out that part that's oblique, because it's not really gonna tell you anything anyways. Um, on some of my new, or newer homes I've done, I've actually gone through and tried to show everything on there and it, sometimes it gets a little cumbersome but these are just sections through that same house and the corresponding line work and then the end product of those sections i will open up the pdf or become very telling drawings uh, these drawings are really detailed they actually give the contractor um, every single wall of height throughout the entire home. So you'll see all the tags all the way around. That's the, the purpose I use them for, is not showing what the actual assembly is. I use a detail for that. That's what the little keys are. So on all my section sheets, I use them to set all of the elevation heights of all the walls, floors, foundations. And then I use these tags. The square ones are actually um, assemblies, and the round ones are all the specific details to the home. And so this one, you see there's actually eight sheets of these sections that cut through. Does everybody like the crimson? And so they're nice because they really show the client as well, all the different volumes. This house has a really intricate stairway with a, a big timber frame. Yes? Um, I... Generate one for the sections, for the site, the main model, for the reflected ceiling plans, because in the reflected ceiling plans, I take the model and I bring it in as a component and then I um, mirror it about the blue axis. That way you can see it. I think I have a sample of that too. So if you look at, did I lose some of you on that one? I see the gentleman in front shaking his head, what? Um, it, the, I use that for also for the lighting plans. So I'll open up the. Um, boy, my eyes really got wind burned today. So this is looking at a reflected ceiling plan of that same home. And so instead of looking at the floor plan, I'm looking at all the ceilings because I just simply take that model and mirror it about the axis. But I never edit this model, I only edit the main model and then update it as I make changes. I'm a one-man shop, so it's pretty easy for to make sure that I'm on it trying to update those models. How do you go about revision? You just 
into that much detail and really find some guys who do those three walls for me, then all of the section comes in the face and you overlay and then you bring down as well. Yes, they will. And the way I deal with that is just being efficient in SketchUp. So I actually, I don't run into too much time where I've ever had to tell a client that they're getting charged additional services. Uh, most of the time with my clients, in fact, I, I don't limit them on design changes during the design phases, schematic and design development. The only time I would ever go back to them is if we're in construction documents and they start saying, let's move some walls around, then I just charge them hourly. I don't run into that actually all that often. Um, I do have one exception on one project I'm working on right now where a client decided when we finished construction documents that they wanted all their three and a half and 12 roof lines to be 12 and 12. And so, um, oddly enough, it w it's, it's not that bad. I, you know, it's just, it's just getting efficient at it and structuring the model. The key for roofs that are complex, I just keep every single plane, every individual roof a separate group so that I never have to worry about the intersection of the two. Those are just symbols laid over the reflected ceiling plan. So I use the reflected ceiling plan for um, two different drawing types. One, the lo uh, lighting plan. Then I do a separate one that's for finishes, which shows where we have false beams or cased openings, um, elements like that, or different types of materials. Uh, one of the things that I started doing actually um, between the last base camp and now was I actually trained my structural engineer, which is Zachary Engineering, to do his work set up the same way. He started seeing all the detailing I was doing and said, you know, I'd, I'd really like to try and do a structural model. And I said, I would love it if you did a structural model because I think the coordination would be absolutely remarkable. And so, we have a house that we just finished. It's in the same development. And uh, this was the first project we did together. And so I sat him down, showed him how to work, layout, and sketch up. And the way we started was I sent him the house model. So this is my house model. And you can see all the studs and framework set inside. And I, I apologize, I don't have all of my um, elements open so I can toggle it off. And so what he did, which is nice, is it still retains all of my layers because it's just my SketchUp model in this structural model of his, but we keep it also on a single layer that he places. There is architectural, he labeled it architectural sketch. So when you shut that off, then you can see just his structural model, which he color codes. And we can see all, uh, he does all the vertical with blue. He does all the sheer with the purple, and we actually see where we have steel beams. Um, if you go in here, there's a steel. This might be an, oh, there's actually a piece of steel behind there, you just can't see it. But what makes it really exciting for me is when we have a coordination meeting, instead of looking at a bunch of plans where you're looking at the beams going, okay, do I have enough head height over the stair because I've got a 35 inch deep glue lamp? We don't have to do that anymore. We just open up the model with the SketchUp model overlaid and we just walk through the whole house. And so we can see what every beam size is, where we have posts projecting in. As an example, we're doing a, a lakefront right on Lake Tahoe right now. It's a pretty big house. And the owner wanted as much glass as possible on the home. And to do that, we had a lot of moment frames because of the combination of you know, no shear walls and giant snow loads. And so we ended up with two eight inch posts that are projecting into the kitchen or eight inch steel columns. And we were able to coordinate that with the interior designer to develop basically two little pilasters that frame out the um, range hood in the kitchen. And so it became something that we took advantage of well before construction even started. In fact, that project is going to start construction May 1. And so he also does all of his details this way. So we sat down and looked at a way that he could develop his details and he played with it for months and did some beautiful work. So this is one of his sets of drawings. These are how he does all of his foundation details. I'm not a fan of keynotes, but that's what he's used to. And so in some cases, when we have particular details like knife plates, I'll send him a close-up of what I'm doing or one of my details. And then he goes through and 
complements it with this. So it's a very thorough set of drawings. And then he does the framing plans the same way that I do my plans with the overlay. Um, it makes it easy for him because he gets my layout file as well, so he already has the background, all the grid lines, dimensions, everything's all set for him. So for him, he said it has done the same thing it did for me. It increased his production drastically over uh, using Revit. So he was the first guy I've converted from Revit to SketchUp. So. Which is, and so we actually have done quite a few projects now together. Um, this is actually that same house, and it's built now. And you can see, I think, make sure I pick some of the right ones. Some of the elements, the timber frame, I don't know if you recognize them from the other thing. The one thing this, this client did, which I didn't particularly like, was they changed a lot of the, the color of the trim to something really dark. Let's see if I can find one of the front. Yeah, that's a view from the street. It's almost finished, I should say. It's still at the garage doors. And then you can see the, I'll open up his file again and click on the sketch file. So you can see this is a pretty complex model at this point, but really shows the story. Then you go to the picture. That's the finished house. You can see they did the darker trim on it. So the other types of drawings that I do, are we running out of time? Okay. Let's see what I've got here. Is it fine sections? Are the details. And so all of my detail sheets, um, this is a house that I just finished in... Um, it's in another development, it's a golf course community, and we just submitted this one right before I came here. And so I do all of my architectural details that same way that I've shown him to do the structural details. In this case, it's showing different door configurations and the way I set them up, kind of in a traditional manner of the head jam cell for each type. Uh, the first one being a typical wood exterior door, the next one being a sliding glass door, uh, the next one are two different types of garage doors where it's wood trim or stone trim. And in most of the houses, I'll typically have, you can see this is for this one job, these are all detail sheets. I'll open up just a couple of them. In this case, I try to combine all the roofing details. Pretty complex roof with three different roofing types. It has composition shingles, standing metal seam, and um, modified bitumen roofing for some of the flat timber frames. I generate these, uh, a lot of times I'll use the manufacturer's AutoCAD profiles and then extrude them for elements like this here. I don't know if you can see my cursor, you probably can see it. So I'll get that extrusion from, for instance, this is metal sales, they have them all online, and then I extrude it and then I place it into the model. Same with the windows and doors, I will do that as well, get their frame details, extrude them and, and take them in. Yes. I have lots of details. So I have, yeah, and they are in the same position. So what I do is the way I develop some of these drawings and details is I, when I first started is I had a window detail with a really simple, no. Why is it asking me that? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> touche. So um, when I developed the detail originally, I, I started with one window detail. And then as I started changing trim, I used that same detail and saved as. So they always end up in that same position, which is nice because you can actually real time, if I toggle them back and forth, they can see what it looks like if we did a two piece trim or single piece or, or narrow piece. No, I save them as individual, um, SketchUp files, so I'll have, I have like a, a, a base batch of window details that'll have head jam sill that has lots of different types. And then for each particular job, because these are custom homes, most of the time they're not always the exact same detail. I'll bring that detail into a job file detail, edit it, and then imp that becomes that file in layout for that particular sheet. 
No. Oh, is that what you were asking? I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, it does not. That would get too cumbersome. These are all little vignettes. Thank you. I'll open up one of the details. So here's an example. This is a roof detail. Let me scooch this over. And it has two scenes saved. And it's just a vignette. If I shut off the fog, you'll see what it is. It's just a, a little assembly. Because otherwise the SketchUp model would just get too cumbersome and it would be hard to keep that within the model. Uh, sometimes I do take in pieces of the model in order to get the accuracy to the design. But a lot of times some of these details become really standardized details. And for instance on this, some of the elements that would really change wouldn't necessarily be the framing, it might be the trim, the type of roofing, or the soffit material in this case. And so, I then, so I've just got a large library of different details that I bring into each job. And I have them all organized in different folders for roof, for metal roof, for composition shingles. Um, so they are just small vignettes. Um, actually, I went to an art school for, I went to Rhode Island School of Design for Architecture. And um, so my, I think my drive to make drawings look a little nicer comes from that background because we had, at RISD, we had to t take all the same programs as everybody else. In fact, when you graduate RISD for their architecture, you actually get two degrees. You get a Bachelor of Fine Arts and a Bachelor of Architecture. Where I actually learned how things and pieces and parts go together is for years before I did houses, I did nothing but California public schools. And there we were always dealing with the low bidder, so we had to provide very detailed AutoCAD drawings. And I did a lot of site administration, so I watched a lot of work go together. Um, one of the best lessons I had was I actually built one of my, uh, at my home I built an addition to it and did all the framing and everything myself. So I saw a lot of the things that would make builders scream that I designed myself. Like putting your addition at 51.5 degrees to the house. <laughs> Not a good idea. And so, it, 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 and a lot of it was, you know, looking at, looking at things like, you know, graphic standards. I, I always loved that book, even when I was in school. I just love to look at the old details. I love to look at the way that they were drawn as axonometrics or perspectives. To me, they were always much more telling than looking at a 2D flat drawing. And uh, all the contractors I work with agree they love having this level of detail on a home. And um, the initial investment in time, obviously, of getting a detail library started is always big, but eventually it's very time saving because you can imagine it, how long does it take to go in and edit a window detail and change just that head trim piece. It's seconds usually. You extrude it to whatever dimension you like. Yes? Well, I'm hoping they're passing those savings on to my clients, but um, <laughs> they definitely are saving time. I don't get all that many questions in the field. A lot of times I just go check on behalf of the owner and drive and walk the project. And only time we have issues come up is if we decide to make a change and it affects the design. For instance, a cabinetry change or a door configuration. Um, but for the most part, I, I, I hope it helps. But where I live, our cost of construction is insane. Yes? Uh, with code review and all that, I'm on a streak. I'm on 12 submittals so far with no comments, with, with three different building departments. I can't guarantee it's going to happen because our, our one building department that we submit to, which is Placer County, is so swamped with work right now that they are outsourcing back check. And so it's hard to pay a back checker to come back with no comments. So I'm expecting to get my first comments on a project coming up. Yes? I, uh, 
in the last uh, three months, it's been a little tough. It's been a little, t it's been busy. That's all I can say. One more? The only plans I, I insist that my client pay for in color are the two permit sets, because then we have one full color set in the field and then one for the inspector. Everything else, we just print black and white from the P color PDFs, and my printer does a great job. Even in black and white, they come out really good. They come, you can see the fog, the shadows, a lot of definition. You have to have a printer that knows what they're doing, though, because if they don't, they end up with a bunch of plans that are all black. No, I have I have a I outsource for for the big sets. Some sets I'll do in house. I've got a um, HP T790, I think, and it does really. It prints beautifully and it's fast. wasn't very expensive either. Yes. I don't know, but if I would... They, they do, but as an architect, and maybe this is just me, I would never give out my SketchUp model, or Revit model for that matter, if they went to make modifications without me knowing it. I just, I think the liability for that would be too much. So I actually don't, in my contracts, I do not issue out the SketchUp model. I do not issue out, the only thing I issue out, according to my contract, are JPEGs and PDFs, and everything else is kept in-house. So you know, I did, I did, I think it's still up there. A long time ago, I uploaded a, a, a house model. It was one of my first, it was, I think it was one of the first projects that I went full in SketchUp. I don't know if it was SketchUp and Layout because it was 2005, so it was probably just SketchUp AutoCAD, but I did load it up in there. I think if you searched Timber Frame Tahoe Home, it comes up. But it was before I knew or was keeping my models really organized, so it's just one big model with some components, no groups. I th yeah, it was, it was an ouch. It was hard to work with. So, but now it's much different. So, yes, in the back. In the SketchUp model? It'll depend on the house. Do we have time to answer that? Okay, this will be the last one. I'm, I'm working on a house. I think I have it on here. Um, let me see where I might have placed it. Uh, you know, it may not be on here. Uh, but to answer your question, I can probably answer it with the, the main model here. So uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I, I keep my layers very simple. So this house in particular, um, all of every roof plane, because I would do floor planes the same if there was a lot of variation, every one of them is their separate group on a layer just called roof. Sometimes, depending on how I want to visualize the plans, I'll have to put them on a separate or a different layer. For instance, I might have roof second floor because it'll read better. Sometimes it'll capture the eaves as an example where I don't want to see that in the floor plan in the section cut. But I keep all the floor plans, the first floor on its own layer, um, just called first floor plan, second floor plan on its own layer. Um, if there's a different wing that's set at a different elevation, I will keep that on its own group probably within the same layer, but I keep them separated so that I can make adjustments because a lot of times when I'm working on a site, and this house actually is on a fairly flat site, but most of my projects have a lot of steep pitch to them, I want to be able to adjust some of those elevations as I'm designing. So I try to keep 
areas, for instance, a garage, since it's somewhat separate from the home, a lot of times that elevation of the garage and its relationship to the entry or the main level of the home might flux and I can play around with its elevation relative to grade. So as an example, I'm doing a house right now that's on a big 30% slope. So the garage is cut in 10 feet into the slope and then I have to mitigate how I'm getting up to that upper main level. And so it has a lot of different levels that I keep as separated groups that I can control with layers and control those into my scenes for layout. Does that make sense? Okay, sorry. I think we're gonna cut it off there. Yep. Um, big thank you to Mr. Nick Saunders. <laughs>